this came out today. This was an article where they talked a lot about um, uh, various things. A lot of it, honestly, is kind of recycled from previous talk topics over the past 18 or so years, um, not years, months. But I pointed out some of the interesting tidbits. I took the day to maybe uh, translate a lot of it. If these four gamer articles, they end up always really, really long because it's kind of because of the format. Like it's more, not necessarily like a question answer thing, but it's usually uh, it's usually like conversation stuff. You know what I mean? Like they'll sit down with three people and they'll just uh, like this guy will ask a question or whatever. And then everybody just kind of pops off and talks after, you know, that kind of thing. First, uh, the interviewer brought up the, I, the question like uh, at the end of the first beta, what was a point that players brought up the most in feedback? And Daisuke says basically, you know, it was about the lobby. Katano says that most people thought the lobby was hard to use and get into fights. So our team looked at it once again and agreed. Up until release, this was something that they've been reviewing and working on. Um, in the first beta, a lot of people felt air actions were too strong. But in the second beta, jump distance was shortened. And then there was the addition of landing recovery. So the buff on anti-airs, uh, I guess he's talking about 6Ps in this case, made for really extreme balance changes. As they said before, you know, this was kind of an extreme uh, response, extreme, you know, on one end or the other kind of balance patch. And he said, compared to the first beta, air actions and the degree of freedom around them has been lowered, I feel. Katano says it specifically became kind of more stiff, right? We also recognized it and through analysis on user feedback, we are making sure of the best points to adjust things. Uh, Daisuke says, for dissatisfaction with air actions, they had a feeling people might complain about it, but they wanted to see if maybe that something would happen that they hadn't predicted or if there was something that maybe they didn't recognize before that would happen. So they were comfortable with making that really big, big change like that. Mostly it's just for testing, you know, that's kind of what he was, what he's saying. He's basically saying, dude, we were just messing around just seeing what would happen if we did it. <laughs> Pretty much. He basically is like for science almost. Uh, compared to previous GGs, those games had a lot of air combat. I think in this title there is less of that. But did you do that specifically because you wanted to emphasize more grounded combat? Daisuke says, yeah, I guess you can say that. Until now, GG has had a lot of freedom in the air. And that is an attractive point of the game, but it also carries a high degree of difficulty. That is a problem we recognize for new players that it is too difficult. Dealing with air combat, long combos, etc. for new players, we had to rework these things for them. The current form of the game is a result of looking back on all those things. However, don't misunderstand. Just because you made the game simpler doesn't necessarily mean that for a fighting game, things are that easy. Actions carry more risks now. And he said... JP always goes to this word, severe. I guess in this case it means more like volatile. But he says actions carry more risk now, so the game has become more severe. Take that how you will. Uh, Katano kind of piggybacks on it and says, you know, climbing the... They made the game kind of to where, like, climbing the first set of stairs has become easier. And it's become easier to pick up and play. But from a design standpoint, he doesn't think that it's become all that easier. Compared to past titles in the series, it's a different kind of severity and difficulty. So with those together, he wants to be able to offer a Guilty Gear-ish uh, game, and that's kind of what they're making. He said it, it, isn't, it isn't as though they don't want players to jump, for example, with regards to the beta changes, but they want the kind of freedom and technical control that you would associate with GG. Simply, he doesn't think just because past titles had XYZ kind of movement that this title has to have the exact same change or the exact same feeling, you know? Uh, this balance philosophy is called like wild balance. He says the focus that they want to have is on fun, not strength. Katano brings up the point. He says like when they're making balance changes now, they're making balance changes with an eye towards a character's strengths or like unique points. And f they use this word fever points, but I guess that means like, you know, like their attributes, their unique attributes, I guess. Uh, like for example, Potemkin it revolves around his command throw, right? Pop Buster, which does unprecedented damage, something that didn't really even change between the first two online betas, right? Uh, Ishiwatari continues. He says, like, in the past, you know, previous games, Potemkin was a grappler, but he still felt strong even when he wasn't throwing. In Strive, they really want to push him towards the grab, is kind of the idea, you know? Daisuke says that in previous games, 
some of the designs kind of became inconsistent. For example, like, I guess Axel would be a good idea where, or a, a good example where you have a character that's based around long range and mid range, but then he has certain tools that are really good up close, you know? Uh, in his mind, that became inconsistent. You know, that's just, uh, it's just what they're saying. It's something that they want to avoid in this game, and they want to make sure that, like, the concept of the character is developed as opposed to uh, strength and weakness, I guess. And something that he talks about is, like, the term when they say, like, wild balance here. They've been using that internally when discussing the balance for a while now. And But what it means is kind of, like, when they make changes, they want to focus on, rather than strength or weakness, is the character fun? Is the character interesting? A lot of people say they should just... So, this is common, and this is kind of, like, shots at... Uh, I think the Western FGC does this a lot. Every time people always say... Don't nerf, buff. Don't nerf, buff. Everybody always says that. But I think that is a very, like, uh, me personally, this is just my personal opinion, I think that is a very narrow-minded thing to say. I get what you're trying to say, but that's not how you should say it. The truth of the matter is, there can very often sometimes be something that is too fucking strong, or the reward is far too high for the risk you take. That's just a fact of these games. If you've never played, I don't know where this mentality comes from. You should never nerf anything, always buff it. That is some why. That's some uh, some head ass shit to say. You think balance is that simple? It's not. That shit is insanely hard. You have to sympathize to a degree, dude. This shit ain't easy. The next thing that they bring up was the netcode and how they felt about the netcode after the second beta test. Uh, Katano said he didn't have any issues, but. There weren't really that many problems aside from a server issue. And they talked about this in the first section. But there was a server issue that they thought that they had fixed that came up in the second beta. Uh, but they think that they've identified and they think, they think it's fixed now. But one thing that's cool about this is when they come back to this netcode discussion, they're talking about uh, they got a lot of positive feedback from players overseas. And Katano brings up the point that, uh, you know, there's four time zones in America and that a, a lot of players overseas have been dissatisfied with the delay based system that they've used for their netcode up until now he says that it's it's good to, enough to be able to comfortably play between brazil and japan and they feel like they can have comfortable matches between japan and korea or within even like us to japan right there's a great sense of accomplishment in that they have when given that they've developed that that kind of system and uh, you guys at home, y'all know who's responsible for that, man. Give props to Zynek and the team that built that shit. Because it's, in my eyes, I'm going to be 100% honest with you. I think the netcode carries this game. I think the netcode hard carries it. I don't even think, it's not even close to me in my eyes. Uh, with the roll, with rollback, they can hold online events even in remote areas. They think it'd be cool to bring back regional tournaments. And this is a, a point that they kind of bring up, or they come back to later in the interview. Uh, bringing up regional tournaments and stuff like that, that's something that... That's something that happened a lot in the arcade era that new players won't really be able to understand or get behind. So being able to to bring that back, they want more people to be exposed to that arcade culture, is what he says. Katana says that would be a good thing and that the fun and excitement of old arcade events will definitely be, you know, the next generation will get to experience that. Uh, it's their duty to pass that on to them. He says that it's true that fighting game events right now, uh, there's a kind of community culture and that it's the kind of thing that only fighting game community people will have kind of experienced they want to be able to share that with a new generation and he wants to be able to convey that appeal in new ways sounds good it's good uh it's pretty good pr talk and that is true you know for net play tournaments and something stuff like that so the rest of the article isn't really too too interesting they bring up some a couple interesting things i'll summarize uh talking about the dlc the Basically, he says, like, if they're going to add five characters in the DLC, they want at least one to be brand new. Uh, talking about the music. The story music was done by someone else. Dice K did all the battle themes. Uh, he said that he personally liked the Ramothal theme, and Akira really liked the Leo theme. Take that for what it's worth. He said rather than approaching it the way he did before, uh, where he would make... He wanted to make songs before that would be good for, for, for you know, fighting or for battle. He threw that approach away, and instead he approached each theme to represent the backbone and drama of each character. So it's more about 
their story inspiration, I guess. I don't know. Uh, story mode is going to be the conclusion to Soul and that man's story. Uh, he said if Exert Sign, I think Katana said this, if Exert Sign was a visual novel, if Revelator was an anime, this is going to be a movie. Katana says that he knew some core fighting game fans would... Oh, they, they then uh, they shift back to the like camera work with the game in, in the middle of fights. He says that he knew a lot of uh, fighting game fans would complain about how the camera follows the character movements and, and changes angles a lot. You know, that was something that came up in early sign. When you hit dust, regardless of the follow-up, you could the camera changes, right? So as a player, it's kind of difficult to tell when you're back in control. That was something that people complained about really early on. And he goes, in, he goes a little bit more into detail, but he says basically, like, when it comes to... He usually defaulted to, if he was n unsure of something, he would go back to the 2D way of doing it or something like that. But this time, their approach was, if we're unsure of doing of something, we go with the new thing or go with what we think is cool. This would be their only opportunity to take a chance and try something. So with this camera, he said, you know, we wanted we wanted to try it this way, regardless of what you, what you how you felt. And Daisuke said, yeah, he did take feedback from the beta test and he does recognize that they did a little bit too much sometimes i guess when they're talking about the camera effects and stuff so he tried to rein it in in uh in places where maybe they went too far if this is the end of the story is this the end of gg that's what the interviewer prompts and daisuke says he has the future of the series kind of in his head now yeah so he's like he's not sure right now where the story is going to go he has some ideas in his head but basically he's saying like whether or not it'll become kind of like a story about before Soul's story. So I guess kind of like some prequel stuff or something. He does want to continue it. And this isn't a comment about like whether or not they're going to make a game or not. It's more a comment about like what's in his head right now. And so the interviewer is like, so so you so we're gonna continue, right? And Katana's like, he always he's always like really ambiguous. He always says this kind of stuff. You know, for them, he's like, this is kind of a whack discussion or whatever, but like GG is a very important IP for them. And they can't just kind of like throw it away, you know? So he's like, for right now, this is it. This is definitely going to mean a break. But he does have the ideas in his head, you know? Uh, and he brings up this one experience. He was at some kind of event in America where, what's his name's Naito, right? The creator of Trigun. He was with him there and, and the creator of Trigun said something that stuck with him. He said, it's a greater feat to finish something than it is to, to start something or to start making something. Finishing something is more like is greater than just to, to make something like that. Since then, he's always had the kind of thought process of like, whatever I do, I have to finish. I have to find some kind of closure or conclusion to, to whatever I start. And then the rest, yeah, that's more or less it. The rest is kind of like whatever. That was uh, the four gamer interview, basically in a nutshell. Not too much interest, you know, a lot of a lot of just stuff that you've been hearing for the past 20, 18, 24 months, whatever. I guess they, they talk a little bit about quote unquote esports in the end. Uh, Katana says they, they'll they announce plans before the game launches and that they have plans for various events and tournaments that have a, that a wide range of players will be able to in, enjoy. Uh, they're also tr they want to hold new types of events and they're taking into consideration the current situation, noting that, you know, for arcade players, it's easy to get together and enjoy offline events, but it's difficult for some people to participate in. So he says they're focused purely on developing the game for three years. So now he wants to make sure that they do something that they can enjoy the game together with the players. But that was the four gamer interview. This one is the developer's backyard. So here we go. We've had two major events since the last uh, de developer's backyard. The open beta test number two and the Red Bull Kumite. We aim to show new players that it is possible to enjoy fighting game games without knowing about the battle mechanics by opting not to include explanations of the mechanics in the tutorial mode and by reworking the matchmaking system. However, we would recommend players who want to improve to get and get stronger to play the mission mode. This is the true tutorial of the game. There are over 120 missions total between explanations of mechanics, techniques, combos, and counter strategies for individual characters. That is very good. You cannot say that a lot of other games out have tutorial content built to teach you how to fight other characters in the game. The missions are divided by difficulty level, so there's no need to try clearing all of them at once. This mode is great for when you feel you've run into a wall during your matches or when you don't know what to practice next. Oof, adjustments to battle balance. As jumping was extremely strong during the first open beta test, we mainly adjusted aerial options for this test. This is something that they just talked about in the interview. 
It was our first time attempting to implement such extreme balance changes, such as decreasing movement, arc of jumps, adding landing recovery before release. We were able to get extremely useful data thanks to this paired with that from the first test. We are making final adjustments in the direction of increasing the movement arcs while retaining the landing recovery on aerial attacks and double jumps, etc. for the final game. We are also working on adjustments for other game elements such as tension gauge. I think they're what they're talking about trying to buff it, right? For different situations. Buff it based on like actions. So like if you're considering if you're constantly attacking or using attack buttons and they're making contact, you're more likely to get the, the positive tension pulse. Increased number of plus frames on some counter hits, so making it easier to confirm counters. I'm assuming on the big uh like the big counter camera zoom in, right? The cancel window for Gatling combos. Yo, shouts to SKD. Minor changes to the combo rules. Huh. And individual balance changes for all characters. Please look forward to the release date to experience the finished game. The cancel window for Gatling combos. That's an interesting one. Uh, yeah, this is... That's all for this volume. Planning on continuing this project after the game's release. So this is the last one before release, but they'll continue after. Not really that much. Just kind of acknowledgement of some of the stuff that was said in the surveys. It's cute. You know, the week before, drop it. No biggie. Curious as to what they're going to change with the day one patch, you know? I'm thinking, dude, first three weeks of this game, is gonna, it's going to get busted wide open still. I'm thinking even two betas wasn't enough. They're, they they got to come. There's got to be something. I'm still expecting, like, multiple infinites. Like it, I think when people have three weeks to just sit down with it, I think this game's going to get busted wide open. EVO Online is going to be so nasty. I'm just, I'm just, I'm already prepared for it. But you know what? Let me know what you guys think. I'll holler at y'all in the comments. Be good.